Now let's get to a big warning from a big bear. Investor Jeremy Grantham says the stock's super bubble that he warned about previously has yet to pop. The GMO co-founder sees more trouble ahead due to what he calls a dangerous mix of overvalued equities. Today we have a crucial topic on our hands. The ominous warnings from legendary investor Jeremy Grantham about an impending market crash. Specifically where he said, we are on the edge of a bubble that's ready to burst, and there's a 70% chance the market will crash in the near term. Those are not words to be taken lightly. Grantham, known for his contrarian approach and prescient calls on market bubbles, draws parallels between the current market conditions and historical crashes, such as Black Thursday in 1929, when $14 billion was wiped off the market in a single day and the burst of the dot-com bubble in 2000, both of which led to significant market downturns. And in 2021, we witnessed a 10% hit, leaving many investors on edge. And here, the US stock market is once again bumping up against all-time highs. And this has Grantham warning that the market is dangerously overvalued. You are well known in the investment world for uh, saying that sometimes there are bubbles and bubbles should be avoided. Do you think we're in a major bubble now, at, right now in the United States? And do you think that uh, the tech bubble has burst sufficiently so, so that the tech bubble burst is over? I think we are descending from the 2021 bubble, which was one of the great bubbles. And this should be normally the deflationary per period, the deflating period, uh, which is a function of uh, will the earnings a decline, will profit margins decline, will the economy go into recession, and we will have a recession running perhaps deep into next year, and, a, and an accompanying decline in stock prices. So the recession that you're predicting is probably not going to happen in 2023, but maybe... It may start in 2023. So what does all of this mean for investors? How can you not only survive, but thrive in the face of a potential market crash? Well, Jeremy Grantham offers a unique perspective. Buying assets to survive and get rich in a crash. Grantham's strategy involves strategic asset allocation and a keen eye for opportunities during market downturns. In this video, we will explore his insights and explore practical steps that you can take to protect and grow your wealth amidst economic uncertainties. I, I suspect that they will once again dominate and we will have a recession running perhaps deep into next year and, a, and an accompanying decline. Jeremy Grantham recently issued a cautionary warning about investing in the U.S. stock market. He expressed concerns that if certain challenges arise, the S&P 500, a key U.S. stock market index, could potentially experience a significant drop of over 50 percent. The trend line being slightly generous is 2,500. And most of the great bubbles, the super bubbles, go below trend and stay there for quite a while. Uh, in the Greenspan era, that tendency stopped. In 2000, yes, the Nasdaq came down 82%, which was fairly brutal. Amazon came down 92 But the Federal Reserve raced to the rescue so loudly and strongly that they stopped the decline in the S&P at trend line. It only declined 50%. 50% is a hell of a big decline, uh, but it was only enough to get it back then to trend. This time trend is at most 2,500. And I would expect, even if the Federal Reserve tries to do the same, it will be hard to prevent the market from declining to that level. Jeremy Grantham's cautionary stance on the U.S. stock market, particularly the S&P 500, revolves around several economic indicators. Firstly, the colossal U.S. debt of $33 trillion raises concerns about the country's economic stability. High levels of debt can potentially hinder economic growth and impact investor confidence. Secondly, Grantham highlights elevated interest rates in the U.S. An increase in interest rates can lead to higher borrowing costs for businesses, potentially squeezing their profits and causing a ripple effect in the stock market. The mention of unsustainably high yield levels suggests that Grantham is wary of investment returns being too optimistic or unsustainable. 
This could imply that current market expectations for returns may not be realistic, signaling a risk of market correction. Grantham's apprehensions extend to the real estate and mortgage sectors. The U.S. housing market has faced various challenges, with the Great Depression of 2008 being the only instance resulting in a significant drop in home values. The housing shortage in the U.S. has led to a heightened demand, surpassing the number of available properties for purchase or rent. As mortgage rates have increased and housing affordability has decreased, more people are competing for a limited housing supply. Year over year, there has been a deceleration in home price growth since 2022. The implication of this trend suggests that the housing market is undergoing a slowdown or a deceleration. They only specialize in what I call the really great bubbles. If you go back to 1929 to 2000, uh, to Japan, and, and the housing, the housing part of the housing bubble, and you ask, how did conditions look? Profit margins looked great, the forecast was great, there was no chance of a, of a recession. A few months ago, smart people were saying there was a 20% chance of a recession in three years. I mean, it is quite amazing. And what happens after the bubbles break is there's always a recession pretty quick. And um, people never get it, people never forecast it. And, and along with the recession comes a drop in profit margin. Challenges in these sectors could have broader implications for the economy, affecting both consumer confidence and financial markets. Here's why Grantham is so concerned about the state of the U.S. stock market and how you can adapt your investing strategy if you share his bearish views. His current bearish outlook centers on several key factors. Grantham points to the Russell 2000 Index, which represents the smallest 2000 stocks in the Russell 3000 Index, as a particularly vulnerable area in the U.S. market. This index focuses on small cap stocks, often seen as a reflection of the broader U.S. economy due to its emphasis on smaller domestic businesses. Grantham highlights that the Russell 2000 has a high concentration of so-called zombie companies, meaning those that struggle to cover their interest payments without accumulating more debt. Approximately 40% of these companies reportedly lack positive earnings while carrying record levels of debt. Grantham is also cautious about the S&P 500, a broad market index that includes 500 of the largest U.S. companies. He predicts a potential dip below 3,000 points from its current level of around 4,500 points. Grantham sees this as a reasonable expectation, but in a worst-case scenario, he envisions the index dropping to 2,000 points. However, he acknowledges that such a drastic decline would require multiple significant issues to arise. Grantham then draws attention to the dominance of the so-called Magnificent Seven, which comprises the seven largest U.S. tech companies by market capitalization. These are Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, NVIDIA, Tesla, and Meta. According to Grantham, these companies are currently propping up the U.S. market and asserting global dominance. Their earnings and stock market performances, buoyed by a steady rise in private equity, also known as PE, have led to unprecedented multi-trillion dollar market capitalizations. Grantham notes that without the contributions of these companies, the S&P 500 would not be showing positive performance for the year. Grantham also expresses concern about the unprecedented narrowness of the market, primarily driven by the Magnificent Seven. This concentration raises questions about the future trajectory of these companies. Grantham poses several speculative scenarios. Will these companies continue to grow and represent a substantial portion of the world's market cap? Will they face regulatory challenges from governments? Might they engage in aggressive competition with each other, potentially impacting profit margins? The uncertainty surrounding these questions adds to the overall market apprehension. In response to these concerns, Grantham advises investors to look beyond the U.S. market. So if I said to you, look, I'm not that wealthy, I have $100,000, I'd like to put it somewhere where I'm not going to lose it, what would you recommend a person? Just an index fund or something else? No, no, I think a, a global index fund that, that had um, most of its money outside the U.S. And if, if they were up to it, I would say, own, only invest outside the U.S. for the time being. Because this, this overpricing in the market is mainly a U.S. event. 
The, the markets outside the U.S. are not particularly overpriced. Consider developed markets in the United Kingdom, Japan, and Europe. Grantham suggests these markets may offer better and more reasonably priced investment opportunities. According to Jeremy Grantham, one key strategy to navigate the market's ups and downs is to focus on quality. In simple terms, quality refers to the fundamental strength and stability of a company, and Grantham argues that this aspect has been consistently undervalued in the market for a century. To illustrate the importance of quality, Grantham draws a parallel with AAA bonds. AAA bonds are considered the highest quality bonds, indicating a low risk of default. Grantham notes that these bonds tend to outperform in bear markets, but then underperform in bull markets. The reason behind this lies in their perceived boring nature. In a bull market, investors are often drawn to flashy and high-flying stocks like Tesla or meme stocks that capture attention and promise quick gains. However, in the long run, Grantham argues, companies with a focus on quality, like Coca-Cola, tend to perform well. Now, to understand this concept better, let's break down what Grantham means by quality in the context of investing. Starting with number one, low debt. Imagine you're lending money to a friend. You'd feel more comfortable if your friend has a stable income and isn't drowning in debt, right? Well, similarly, companies with low levels of debt are generally considered more stable and less risky. If a company has minimal debt, well, it's less likely to struggle with repayments, especially during tough economic times. This financial stability makes such companies more attractive to investors. For example, let's consider two hypothetical companies, Company A and Company B. Company A has a significant amount of debt, while Company B operates with little to no debt. Well, in an economic downturn, Company A might struggle to meet its debt obligations, potentially leading to financial distress. On the other hand, Company B, with low or no debt, is better positioned to weather economic challenges. Number two, high stable returns. Investors generally want a return on their investment, and they prefer it to be both high and consistent. A company that consistently delivers strong financial performance is considered a quality investment. Grantham suggests looking for companies with a track record of stable returns over time. Let's take the example of Coca-Cola, a classic blue chip stock. Coca-Cola has been in business for over a century and has consistently delivered stable returns to its investors. The demand for its products remains relatively steady, contributing to the company's ability to generate consistent profits. In contrast, a trendy and volatile stock might offer high returns one year, but then they could be much riskier in the long run. And number three, lower risk and volatility. Quality companies are often characterized by lower risk and volatility. This means that their stock prices are less likely to experience wild swings compared to riskier alternatives. Grantham points out that in a bull market, when everything seems to be going up, the market tends to favor exciting and high-risk stocks. However, these can be like a roller coaster ride, exhilarating, but with unpredictable ups and downs. On the other hand, quality stocks, with their lower risk and volatility, may not give you the adrenaline rush of a high-flying stock, but they do provide a more stable and less nerve-wracking investment experience. For example, during a market downturn, high-quality stocks may not plummet as dramatically as riskier alternatives, offering a more secure harbor for investors. Jeremy Grantham's advice boils down to focusing on the fundamentals of a company rather than getting swept up in market trends. Just like a reliable and well-built car can outlast the excitement of a flashy sports car, investing in high-quality companies with low debt, stable returns, and lower risk can provide more consistent and enduring returns over the long term. While the market may sometimes overlook these solid performers in favor of more exciting options, Grantham suggests that quality has proven to be a consistently valuable but underrated asset for investors over the past century.